So what do you say we uh, learn how to do some uh, diamond quilting today? Specifically for the Lola pattern, but you could use it for any pattern, I'm sure. I'm going to show you a, uh, a finished panel. Here's this one. I know, crazy, huh? I did white with black thread. Hey, you got to go bold or go home. So that's what we did. I think it's going to look pretty sharp. This is the front of the bag. There's the back of my quilting. You can't see the lines, but that's pretty much what I sewed on. Um, so let's uh, let's get to it. Um, you do want to refer to the tutorial, the, um, the printed tutorial in the files, PDF. And that t tells you how to draw the lines and um, how to, you know, what size to cut your vinyl. So I'm not going to repeat all that today. Um, but uh, everything is in there. So we can just focus on sewing today. Here is the panel that you're going to have before it's been stitched. This is, like I said, I think it's, I forget, 18 by 11 is the panel piece. And uh, this is showing is woven fuse. And then I have my vinyl on the back. And hopefully you can see the outline of the, the uh, Bozel double-sided fusible foam. And that is there. So we sew over the foam. The foam is great. Um, it is double-sided, thus we have to put the woven fuse over it. I like it anyhow. Or you make a whole mess of your iron. And uh, we don't want that. So um, make sure you have a full bobbin. You need, you probably need two bobbins at least, or two bobbins to make these panels with extra, but we don't really wanna have to change thread in the middle of the sewing. So we're going to, uh, we'll start. I'm sewing, uh, this is my Juki 8700 today. I have a 4.25 uh, stitch length. I'm using uh, the Selric non-bonded thread, which I know people either love or hate. I'm one of those who loves it. It works for me, so I have tons of it. I have no issues. Uh, so let's get sewing. Mm -hmm. We're going to start. I have my favorite little uh, what do you call it? zipper foot on. It's got a nice visible area. And we're going to start by sewing right through the middle line that we mm -hmm. already have drawn on. Very important that you uh, hold your threads behind and let's just sew. I'm going to sew all of it, but I'm not going to make you watch all of it. I'll probably edit this out so you can kind of see the before and after. Otherwise, I'm sure I'll lose your attention. So here we go. So we're just going to take it slow. This is a fun, relaxing process. And we're just following the line that we drew. We're one inch spaced apart. You can do more, you can do less. Like I said, you could also could do um, a checkerboard pattern if you don't want to do the diamonds. Right now I'm in a diamond kit mode. So we're just sewing. Now we know that our um, pattern or the foam, it, it ends about here. And we don't have to sew much more than probably a good inch and a half beyond. So there's no reason to sew all the way to the end unless you want to, but really it's just a waste of your thread. And also no need to backstitch when you start or stop because we're going to end up ultimately cutting those threads away. So you do want to cut your threads close on this part and every couple of stitches or lines that you draw, you do want to cut off these threads here as well or they could easily get uh, caught up when you're sewing and it becomes a nested horrible mess and we don't have time for that. So keep your threads to the back. Now we're going to sew just to the right of the line that we just sewed on the same lines. Make sure your thread is behind you. You want to take extra care that you're following the line, not going wiggly, because it will show, especially on something like this, black and white. What was I thinking? I hope it turns out. Okay. And we'll just go. I don't need to go all the way to the end, because we're going to cut that off. So I'm just going to come here. 
Trim that. Go to the next one. Hold your thread to the back. I'm gonna tell you that about 20 times because it's really not fun to pick out a big nested ball of thread on your beautiful quilted panel and it can be avoided. So. So we're uh, just sewing along, enjoying the process. Cutting our threads on the other sides every couple of stitches so that they don't get nested. Hold your thread. And so, I don't sew fast. I could sew fast if I don't want to. Because, why? There's no hurry. Sewing should be fun, enjoyable. Sometimes it's not. Most of the time it is. I love the synchronizer on this machine. It allows me to do the back kick to raise the presser foot up and, I mean, to raise the needle up. It also takes the thread out of the tension guide so there's no reason, no need to turn and crank the wheel. I don't think I ever cranked the wheel except for some precise positioning. I think they probably run about $60, maybe. It depends where you get them from. And they do only work with certain types of servo motors. So this one works with the reliable servo motor. But I'm sure there are other kinds too. I'm just going to keep sewing this. Give it a haircut. I think I've mentioned before, and also in the tutorial, that um, since we're sewing from the back, because it would be really hard to draw all these lines and hope they go away on the front of your fabric or vinyl, um, your bobbin thread and stitch needs to match and look the same as the top stitch. So some people don't think that's possible, but it really is. Especially with an industrial machine, you can fine tune so that the stitches look nearly identical. That usually is achieved by uh, increasing the tension, which is the little white knob here, but you can't see it. Um, I'm not sure about a domestic machine, um, but it's really critical that the top and the bottom look the same or it's not going to look nice. So. And sometimes it requires not just a short little turn to the right, but a full one rotation, sometimes even more. So if you ever see, if your stitches have little uh, bubbles or you just see you know, little dots from on the top, you'll just know you need to adjust the tension. Tighten it. So as Rosemary says, you go righty tidy, lefty loosey, so you don't forget which way to turn for which direction. Which is the case for putting needles in everything. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Now you're going to say that and think about me all the time. Appreciate that. Alright, so we're sewing. Now this last stitch I'm sewing on this particular side, it is probably not even going to be in the pattern when we cut it out. So that's the last one I'm going to stitch on this side, even though I have drawn two additional lines, or one more, because the pattern is going to stop here. There's no reason to sew there. Now, I'm just going to flip it around, and we're going to sew the other side, same direction. I do have a... Uh, brand new needle in, so you're not hearing poop, poop, poop. And I, like I mentioned, a, a full bobbin as well. So we can do all those things in advance and then not have to worry about the small details when we're trying to focus on sewing, which is the most important and fun part. Cut 
goes close. To the other side. Make sure your thread is to the back. Did you all see that uh, Chanel bag making video I posted the other day? Oh my gosh, so gorgeous. And you'll, be, you'll be making your own Chanel bag before you know it. This one's gonna remind me of Breakfast at Tiffany. A little black and white action going. Also my favorite colors that you probably know by now. I'm going to do uh, black accents, so the base and the connectors and the straps are going to be black. I also got that vinyl from my punk. I like it because they come in little one foot rolls, not one foot, yeah, about 58 inch by 12 inch rolls. It's just enough to do usually a project and you're not having to store huge rolls of vinyl even though I like some of those a lot too. But this is a great way to, to try different vinyls. She has a lot of really pretty ones. And uh, she, I should say her name, Amy. Amy ships incredibly fast. I mean, you place the order and you get a shipping notice sometimes within hours, definitely the next day. So that's pretty incredible. few more rows to go and then we're done. See it's really nothing complicated at all. It just takes uh, patience, a little accuracy, a lot of accuracy. reveal. It's going to look a little messy at first, but once we get a, a nice, uh, after we use the template and trace around the piece, it looks quite lovely. Okay. So, our quilting is done. Just give it a, give it a once over look that you didn't miss any lines accidentally because it can get to be a little mesmerizing as you look at these lines over and over and over. And we're going to trim off the extra threads that we can see. And let's see how we like it. Ready for the big reveal? Turned out nice, huh? So what I'll do next is take this to my office and we're going to position the template over it and cut out our piece and we'll be ready to move on to uh... so now we're back to my office and uh, we have our quilted piece it's a uh, face down so that the right side is down and we have our plastic Lola template piece the old version which is will work for the new version too no worries just 
elongate your lines when you do your pattern. We're going to use the, um, the foam on the piece, as I showed you earlier, as your guide. You can, I'm going to place the template. That's the main piece. Make sure you're not using the lining piece by accident. Ask me how I know. Um, and then we're going to just eyeball it so that it is centered mostly around the top and the sides. The bottom does not need to be centered because that piece is going to be sewn attached to the base at a later time. So we don't really need to have foam in there. So we're looking at it and I kind of, I don't know, God's looking out for me, but I got lucky on these two pieces because they um, appear to be centered on the diamonds. So first time that's happened, which is nice for the front. Um, so we're just gonna take our, uh, our pin and trace around the template. You could certainly use your rotary cutter, but like I think I mentioned before, after doing all this work, the last thing I wanna do is accidentally mess it up and cut it wrong. So we just draw. And you'll see when I get done here that there is a bit of waste. So um, just you can be a little bit more careful when you do your uh, cutting them out the vinyl pieces and you'll definitely be able to get uh, three pieces. Now we're just going to cut. I got my beautiful Kai scissors with my name on there because I don't take my cause. And we're just going to cut. I love these scissors so much. They are just so precise, clean lines. If you can afford to get some of these Kai Professional Series, I recommend it. Unfortunately, my brother Hal quit offering them to our group. That was nice for a short while. So we're just cutting this out ever so carefully. So this is our vinyl that we wasted so, like I said, if you want to be a little bit more conservative when you cut out your vinyl and your placement, you'll be able to, to squeeze in a bit more. So, here's our cut piece. You can see the diamonds are just gorgeous. Last thing you want to do is, and this is just me, I'm going to get a piece of paper. I'll be right back. On the front of your Lola, you want to get some fray check and just dab it along the side seams especially because you don't want these stitches coming undone when we start putting her together. Always do a, a, a test first because this stuff does uh, bleed on some fabrics. It didn't in this because I already tested it. So, like I said, all these little things, you know, they take an extra uh, minute and then you've ensured that you're not going to have any frayed edges popping out. And I just do it on paper so I don't have to worry about getting this stuff on my cutting mat. So um, let her dry and on the next video Next video, I will show you um, how we will add our connectors.